How are you, Ashwin, today? I am fine, Mataji. And how are you, Mataji? We are doing okay. Raji, can we start as we wait for devotees to yes. join in? Yeah, we can start with the Mangala Charan. Okay, Shashwin, is it possible for you to do the Mangala Charan today? Yes, yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnana Timirandashya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tashmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadanti Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurun Shri Yutapatakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sakrajadam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Satvedam Swavadudam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shya He Krishna Karuna Sindo Pina Bando Jagat Pate Kopi Shakopi Kakanta Radha Kanta Namoshtute Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Prishavanoshtute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanja Kalpata Rubyashya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishna Vibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadatara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Ashwin, for the wonderful Mangla Charan recital. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanvat Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances and uh, humble obeisances from all who have joined in the group and are about to join. Prabhuji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam and we are on Canto 2, Chapter 3, and the text for today is Text 15, Prabhuji. Okay. So I hand over to you. <clears throat> Narayan Namaskrityam Naram Shaivana Uttamam Devim Sarshatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Uthir Yitra Nashta Prayeshwa Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavate Yutam Shloke Bhakti Bhautina Ashtaki Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So Sanskrit is as follows. Savai Bhagavato Raja Pada Vyo Maharatha Bala Kridan Kai Kridan Krishna Kridam Ya Adade Translation By His Divine Graces Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Maharaj Parikshit, the grandson of the Pandavas, was from his very childhood a great devotee of the Lord. Even while playing with dogs, he used to worship Lord Krishna by imitating the worship of the family deity. Uh, you can read the purport. Purport by Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Ki Jai. <laughs> In the Bhagavad Gita 6.41, it is stated that even a person who has failed in the proper discharge of yoga practice is given a chance to take birth in a house of a devout Brahmana or in a house of a rich man like a Kshatriya <coughs> king or rich merchants. 
But Maharaj Parikshit was more than that because he had been a great devotee of the Lord since his previous birth. And as such, he took his birth in an imperial family of the Kurus, and especially that of the Pandavas. So from the very beginning of his childhood, he had the chance to know intimately the devotional service of Lord Krishna in his own family. The Pandavas, all being devotees of the Lord, certainly venerated family deities in the royal palace for worship. Children to, who appear in such families fortunately generally imitate such worship of the deities even in a way of childhood play. By the grace of Lord Sri Krishna, we had the chance of being born in the Vaishnava family and in our childhood, we imitated the worship of Lord Krishna by imitating our father. Our father encouraged us in all respects to observe all functions such as the Ratha Yatra and the Dola Yatra ceremonies. And he used to spend money liberally for distributing prasada to us children and our friends. A spiritual master who also took his birth in a Vaishnava family got all inspirations from his great Vaishnava father, Thakura Vinod Bhakti Vinoda. This is the way of all lucky Vaishnava families. The celebrated Mirabai was a staunch devotee of Lord Krishna as a great lifter of Gordon Hill. The life history of many such devotees is almost the same because there is always symmetry between the early lives of all great devotees of the Lord. According to Jiva Goswami, Maharaj Parikshit must have heard about the childhood pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna at Vrindavan, for he used to imitate the pastimes with his young playmates. According to Sridhar Swami, Maharaj Parikshit used to imitate the worship of the family deity by elderly members. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati also confirms the viewpoint of Jiva Goswami. So accepting either of them, Maharaj Parikshit was naturally inclined to Lord Krishna from his very childhood. He might have imitated either of the above mentioned activities and all of them establish his great devotion for his very childhood, a symptom of a Mahabhagavat. Such Mahabhagavats are called Nitya Siddhas or souls liberated from birth. But there are also others who may not be liberated from birth, but who develop a tendency for devotional service by association, and they are called Sadhana Siddhas. There is no difference between the two in the ultimate issue. And so the conclusion is that everyone can become a Sadhana Siddha, a devotee of the Lord, simply by association with a pure devotee. The concrete example is our great spiritual master, Sri Narad Muni. In his previous life, he was a simple, he was simply a boy of maidservant, but through association with great devotees, he became a devotee of the Lord, of his own standard, unique in the history of devotional service. Hare Krishna. Over to you, Prabhuji. So this was glorifies Maharaj Parikshit. No, no ordinary devotee. When you talk of Maharaj Parikshit, he was so fortunate that he could hear the entire Bhagavatam. And because he could hear the entire Bhagavatam, we are also hearing Bhagavatam by his mercy. And Krishna chooses his special devotees. For example, his grandfather, Arjun, was chosen to hear Bhagavad Gita. And Parachit was chosen to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So both are great, great devotees. So we'll read the verse today, a verse again. Maharaj Parikshit, the grandson of the Pandavas, was from his very childhood a great devotee of the Lord. Even while playing with dolls, he used to worship Lord Krishna by imitating the worship of the family deity. We find that the children who are born in devotees' families, they pick up these habits because they see their parents uh, doing certain things and they pick up very, very quickly. 
For example, I have noticed that in most devotee families, you don't have to teach your children to chant Hare Krishna. They start chanting by themselves. And some things like bowing down, doing achman, then making garlands, all they learn very quickly. And here we find Maharaj Parishit was no ordinary person. So how does one get such a birth? Sri Prabhupada gives an opinion or an understanding uh, from the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. If you go to see Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna asks a question that, for example, a person is practicing yoga. Now here, yoga literally means bhakti yoga. And he gives up due to worldly mindedness or due to some other reason. What happens? Is he lost like a raven cloud? The example is given of the raven cloud. Raven cloud means, if you notice the small clouds, they wither and they disappear. But the big clouds, they go on moving. And Krishna says, no, it doesn't happen like that. Even if a yoga practice was done for a short time, one takes a birth in a aristocratic mercantile family where there is no shortage of anything. And if one practices yoga for a long time and gives it up, or maybe it could not finish because the life ended too early or something, they are given a chance to be taken birth in a highly elevated Brahmin or a Vaishnava families. So from the very young age, they can practice Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> Just like if you hear of most, of most of our Acharyas, many of them, they're born in very devoted families. And they practice Krishna consciousness from the young age. Now, one example of our Goswami, Gopal Bhatt Goswami, sorry, Raghunath, uh, sorry, yeah, Gopal Bhatt Goswami. He was born in a priestly family. And Mahaprabhu had gone to there. At that time, he was a young boy. And he learned so many things from his parents. And he wanted to go with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu said, no, take care of your parents. When they are not in this world, you come to me. And that is what he did. So that's Gopal Bhattaswami, who celebrated devotees Radha Ramanji. Still, the only deity of the Goswami is in Vrindavan. The others have gone to Rajasthan. Only deity. So anyway, that was about Gopal Bhattaswami. Now, in the case of Parikshit, he is born into the family or the heritage of Pandavas. Pandavas are celebrated as great, pure devotees of the Lord, who knew no one but Krishna. And Krishna loved them like anything. Krishna treated Pandavas like their own family. And in another lecture, Sri Prabhupada says, even sometimes you stay with the Pandavas for six months in a year. Six months continuously. So much affection was there for the Pandavas. So imagine if a child is born in such a family. He doesn't have to be taught. He naturally picks up devotional service. For example, we notice in our temple that in the morning when the altar opens, uh, especially during the Shingara Aati, we find some visitors coming in. Now when they see devotees going down, they also go down. Or those who attend Magalati, if they see devotees sit down and chant, even they start chanting. This is a great, great boon of devotee association. Devotional service is very much dependent on how much we associate with devotees. On our own, it's not possible. We are discussing in Srimad Bhagavatam the story of Rantidev. It is explained that Ranti Dev was not just a broad-hearted devotee or a very compassionate devotee, but he was a strict Vaishnava. He worshipped only Krishna. Though he is such a great person, a great humanitarian, and a very, very broad-hearted, that he could not bear to see anyone thirsty or hungry. <coughs> we all know the story that he shared the food on the 49th day to the Brahmana, half of it. Half of it he gave to the dogs. The water, remaining water, was given to a chatala. And what was he thinking in his mind? 
that if this water can save the life of this person, then he can remain alive. He was almost dying. So he gave the water to him. And in turn, who were they? One was Lord Shiva, one was Lord Brahma, one was Indra. And in the commentary, Sri Prabhupada say, uh, sorry, the verse it says that though the great demigods appeared upon, you know, I mean, in front of them, he could have asked for many, many facilities. He didn't. He only, <coughs> he only asked for devotion service. Not even he asked, but since he was so much engaged in devotional service of Krishna, so much immersed in Krishna consciousness, he did not ask for anything material. So that is a lesson we should learn from the Bhagavatam. That in case, even the demigods, maybe if you become very pure, they may appear in front of you. We should not ask for anything material, but always remain in Krishna consciousness. So such a devotee was also Bali Parishit. Verse says that he is to play or imitate worship while he was playing with dolls. Means even from a very young age, he was practicing Christian consciousness. Now, if you go to Chetan Chatterbutra, we all know the story of Madhvendra Puri. Madhvendra Puri, he had a desire when he went to Ramana, he wanted to taste the sweet rice. Then he felt that he's not doing the right thing because the, right, the rice has not yet been offered. So he felt that he had committed an offense. So he, he came out of the temple, sat in an empty marketplace, and he started chanting Hare Krishna. Now, there, if you go to the Pope, what Prabhupada says, he was chanting like an aspiring devotee. Aspiring means like a new devotee. Chanting very clearly. And as the purple goes further, he says, when you're chanting, you're also chanting and hearing. And when you, sorry, when you're hearing, you're hearing and chanting. When you're chanting, you're hearing, chanting, and remembering. Three things. But when you're worshipping, a fourth thing is added. That when you worship, you're hearing, chanting, remembering, and worshipping all at one go. So this is the power, worshipping the Lord. So our Acharyas, Bhaktis Dhanda Saraswati Thakur Maharaj says, that in our Gaudiya Math, we kept both. Sankirtan Yagi is enough to take you back home, back to God. But why did he keep uh, Archan? Archan means worshipping. So that we remain disciplined. We do not misbehave. And we become focused on the deity. So that's called Pancharitaki Vidhi. He kept both of them. So that we have two parallel lines going together, the Harinam and the worshipping. So that is, we do not fall in our Krishna consciousness. And if you go to third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, I can't exactly remember the verse number. Sorry, seventh canto. I think in chapter 19, I exactly can't, I've forgotten the verse number. This verse explains why was deity worship introduced? Why? In those days, in Trita Yuga, in the time of Lord Ramachandra, because the priests, some of the priests were misbehaving. That is, they introduced the deity so that we, they, at least within the temple, will not misbehave. Misbehave means not very really serious. So don't think this is something happening now. It has been happening for thousands of years. So <clears throat> if you find someone interested in worshipping the deity, is no ordinary person. He is able. I mean... He knows that the Lord is here. The deity worship, the secret of the deity worship is you see Krishna or you see your whoever you're worshipping to be in that deity and you worship. So that is what Maharaj Parishita is doing. And for those born in a very great aristocratic imperial family of the Pandavas who are celebrated as great devotees, even today people say Pandavas are great devotees. So in, in our childhood, we try to imitate. And to imitate something good, there's nothing wrong. Sri Prabhupada gives his own example. That he, he could remember when he was very young, maybe a year or two, he could remember his father worshipping the deity. He could hear the bells ringing. And he would notice how his father was doing. 
And in a matter of, in a very young age, his father bought for him the deity, Radha and Krishna, which are still there, even till now. <clears throat> so Sri Prabhupada started worshiping, worshiping. And he glorifies his father, that his father encouraged everyone to engage in festivals like Rath Yatra, Dole Yatra, and things like that. Because when you participate in these festivals, you gain so much. For example, Rath Yatra is not just fun, but you're actually worshipping the deity. You can see the Lord right in front of you, and you're pulling him. Or you're taking part in that festival. You earn so much merit simply by engaging in this Rath Yatra. That's what Shri Prabhupada wanted us, that <coughs> every temple should have their Rath Yatra. And in the, of course, in the times of Prabhupada, in the whole major cities, but later on, all over the world, the Rath Yatra should take place and prasad be distributed profusely. Everyone should be given prasad. So that is what he had learned from his father. And we all know that Shri Prabhupada had his own Yatra, Rath Yatra at the age of five. And I don't know if you know the whole story. His father went to buy, he, he wanted a chariot of his own. So he went, I mean, sorry, this comes later. Formerly, he had a desire to go to Jagannath Puri. So he'd inquire people, which train goes to Jagannath Puri? So he would ask timings, how much, how many rupees is the ticket? So many things. That means that interest was there. And then later on, he had his own chariot. How? He told his father, I want to buy a chariot, a chariot for the Food Lord Jagannath. So he went to the market. There were so many chariots, small, small. But he wanted a bigger one. He didn't want a small one. So he was very annoyed. He was not looking very happy. So one lady said, why is your child not happy? He says, he wants this big chariot. I can't afford the big one. I want to buy him the small. He said, my home, there is a chariot lying. Use this link. Come and take it. So he got a big chariot. And he bought Jagannath, Baldha, Subhadra. He invited all the neighbors, and in all that street, he performed the Rath Yatra. And due to this training, we have Rath Yatra in every city of the world. Recently, there was a Rath Yatra in Kisumu. And this time, the Rath Yatra was very, very successful, though it was on a Christmas day. So, when you get a training from the young age, then you actually follow what others do. You'll find that, as I told you, the devotees from the young age, they imitate their parents. So we have to make sure our parents, if we are parents, we should not misbehave. We should not act very nicely and make sure who is observing you is your own children. Sometimes people think, then what do these children know? They know nothing. No. Actually, these children are capable to become even gurus because they have seen from the young age. And imagine you misbehave. They are not going to forget. They say, oh, my father used to wear dhoti and kurta. And then when he came home, he used to do some nonsense. But the children remember whether the father or the mother. So as devotees, parents, is a very big responsibility. Make sure that our children, they perform all the duties properly. If need be, we have to teach them. We find that not most of the things are going to learn themselves because you do it and they will also learn it. And from the young age, they are able to chant Hare Krishna very nicely. So someone was even saying, saying that why sometimes the children of devotees go off the track? This is a good question. So I will agree, sometimes they do go off, but only for a short time. They will come back and continue their devotional practices. So we have to do, we have to make sure that whatever we do, it can be a minute thing. I can show you the picture of my grandson. Can everyone see this picture? He's doing Achman. He's not even two years old. Imagine. Because he sees his parents doing Achman. 
So he takes water, he does such well. He offers food. He, t he gives water, he also takes the water. So it's a good training. Nobody has taught him. These children, they pick themselves. So in this way, children are good observers, let, let me tell you. They look at you. They think of you, how you are doing. I can give you my example. That my son, when he was two years old, three years old, he started chanting. And he used to chant so nicely. So uh, he, when he would come on Sundays to the temple, he would chant slightly loudly. So all the devotees would gather around him. The chanting was so clear. Each word was so clear. And the devotees said that he's chanting perfect. So I never taught him, but he picked it. I'm giving you my example. And later on, the same, everything he learned, like deity worship, uh, doing everything. Now, even in the altar, he, can, he, he goes to perform seva because that's the training he has. And he has learned from the parents, from other devotees. So this is the advantage when you, when you are living in a devotee community. In Nairobi, we are very, very fortunate that we have so many devotees around the temple. And all the families, practically all of them, do some service of the temple, including worshipping the deity in the altar. They, they, I mean, they have qualified themselves to become even priests of the temple. So sometimes when we say that sometimes some devotee can fall sick. We always have a standby devotee to do some service. So in this way, if you want your children to become good devotees, then you have to become a staunch devotee, like Maharaj Parikshit. Now also the example is given of Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, the Guru of Srila Prabhupada. Even he was born in a Vaishnava family. And from the very young age, he was extraordinary not in just studies, even in astronomy, astrology, and Sanskrit philosophy. At a very young age, he mastered entire Bhagavad Gita. And once he took a vow to chant three billion names, three billion, it's not easy. It took him years, but he did accomplish. And there are times, because he has to not waste time. So he would put his hands behind when the prasad was given. He would go on chanting and he would eat the way you see a pussycat eating or, a, or an animal eating, you know, or a, a cow eating. Directly mouth and that's it. So that no time is wasted. So good lesson to learn. All these acharis have taught us so many things. And we still have to learn so many things because even I realize that so many things are still to be learned. Even at this age, advanced age, we find that a lot to be learned from not just from the senior devotees, even from the non new devotees. Some of the new devotees are so good. They have so much enthusiasm, so much enthusiasm. So sometimes when they do ecstatic kirtan, jumping, reading nicely, speaking nicely, we feel the purity coming from them. So this is a good lesson to learn. So here, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and Sri Swami is saying that how Maharaj Parikshit used to imitate the worship of the family deity. So here in the, in the purport, we have some words we ought to learn. First of all is Mahabhagavat. Mahabhagavat means not an ordinary devotee. Maha means a great devotee. So Parikshit Maharaj was a great devotee. Another word mentioned is Nitya Siddha. Nitya Siddha from birth means those who are perfected right from the very birth are called Nitya Siddha. How to become a Nitya Siddha is that eternally perfect devotees right from the birth. Then you see the other word Sadhan Siddha. Sadhan Siddha means by practice. And we all stand a chance in this con if you take initiation, that we also get this opportunity to become a sadhan siddha. What is a sadhan siddha? Sadhan means your regular practice of chanting your 16 rounds, 
hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, attending Magalati, either at home or at, at the temple, then attending all the facilities, not missing any one of them. That is called a good sadhan. Good sadhan means daily practice, but done in a regular way, it brings the word sadhan. So this sadhan means your daily sadhan. You find that Sri Prabhupada would appreciate anyone who had a good sadhan. And even our all our present Guru Gurus also, they will always ask a question, especially the temple president, how good is his sadhan? If the president says it's good, then they know where the devotee is standing. So it's not that you do your rounds today and then you skip tomorrow, then again you do after a few days. That's not a good sadhan. Sadhan means to do daily and Mostly those who have fixed sadhana are also strict about their times. They have fixed time for chanting, fixed time for eating, fixed time for sleeping. Everything completely systematic. That is called sadhan, good sadhan. And from that sadhan you can get a siddhi. So the, on the, speaking on the same words, Sri Prabhupada says that all this can be achieved simply by hearing. Simply by hearing. Shinvatam Sukhata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanam. Hidayashi Sua Badrani Pidun Suhit Pidunoti Shuhit Satam. That simply by hearing all that is in your species in the heart gets cleared out and you become purified. So hearing is the best tool we can use in our devotional service. As we hear and hear daily, then even we may be impure, we may be sinful, for example. Maybe our consciousness is already clear, but by hearing, everything becomes clear. You become purified. The finest example Sri Prabhupada gives is that of Narada Muni, that because of the association of the Bhakti Vedantas or the great sages, he became a good devotee by eating prasad, remnants of their prasadam. And furthermore, by hearing from them, eating prasad and hearing, very, very powerful. That's why in the ISKCON, we honor prasad. We give so much respect to prasad. And we do our duties the way our timetable is. See, one wants to become a good devotee. One has to keep a timetable. Sometimes the devotees complain, oh, I could not finish your rounds. Generally, we ask, the what time do you chant? So when I get time at this, when I get time, in the, no, such people cannot chant. If you want to chant regularly, you have to have a fixed time. You must fix a time. Let's say you can't wake, wake up for Magalati. It doesn't matter if you're a working person. But you must fix a time that between 6 and 7, I'll do so many rounds. In the afternoon, at this to this time, I'll do so many rounds. In the evening, I'll do this and this so many rounds. When you keep the time controlled in a timetable, make it into a system, you can chant. Otherwise, you can't chant. There are people who struggle to chant 16 rounds one full day. You see them getting beat back the whole day. They can't finish the rounds. Because the mind, I mean, their system has not been put into place properly. So, <clears throat> in the case of Maharaj Parikshit, he had seen his parents, grandparents, doing all this seva. So for him, it was very easy to pick up. That's so why here, so Dev Goswami is actually praising Maharaj Parikshit, <coughs> the grandson of the Pandas. He's, he's the son of son of Archim. Abhimanyu's son is called Maharaj, I mean Parikshit, who became the king <coughs> and ruled Harsinapur. And this whole Bhagavatam is about that. The whole Bhagavatam explains what happened when he got a curse, how he heard the Bhagavatam. And in that Bhagavatam, everything you need is there. Everything you need is there regarding devotional service. So a question, should, we should ask a question before you go to sleep, even today. Did I hear anything? Did I read anything? If not, 
spend at least 10 minutes to read something in case you didn't get it. So at least you will put in your brain something which is transcendental. Krishna Katha is absolute. That's why it's called transcendental. It's on an absolute platform. So as you hear, you are purifying yourself. And never consider yourself to be very learned. Don't do that. Don't ever think that I know everything. I know the entire book. No, never do that. Always there's a room to learn more and more and more. And there'll be also extra opinions of different devotees. And you can hear them. Sometimes one verse is spoken by many devotees. But you'll find each devotee speaking in slightly different way. But the substance remains the same. So we have to try to learn from each angle. And we have been given the best angle. Prabhupada's purpose is the best angle. And Prabhupada's purpose doesn't just carry Prabhupada. He carries the entire parampara. Entire parampara is with Sri Prabhupada. Now when the parampara is speaking, it is perfect. So you are getting perfect knowledge from the right source. Then if you hear this knowledge and assimilate this knowledge and put it into practice, you cannot go wrong. No way. You will. Sometimes temporary, you may go down due to loneliness or due to losing enthusiasm, but you'll again come up. It won't take time. Again and again, you'll just pop up. And you come to the level of practicing your devotional service the way it is supposed to be. Let me tell you very clearly, Krishna consciousness is not easy the way it looks. It takes time before we get perfection. It can be any nine of the processes. It takes time. Even hearing. Sometimes newcomer, he may have some knowledge about what he's hearing. So in his mind, he's carrying a pride. Oh, I already, I already know this. So let me just hear. And let me see if he makes any mistakes. Or maybe he deviates. It means you are judging the speaker. It happens. But when you learn, you realize that actually it's not like that. What you are hearing is a mercy of Krishna coming to you. So we have to actually <coughs> be very, we have to show the gratitude to the person from whom you are hearing. You'll find that when Prabhupada's lecture finishes in most lectures, the would say, Jai Shri Prabhupada. They were so happy. They were glorifying the, the speaker. We also have to glorify the speaker. Because Bhagavatam is so powerful, it purifies the speaker, the hearer, and the inquirer. All three of them. But those who come to Bhagavatam, not outside, not others, those who are within the Bhagavatam. And this day, technology is so good. You can hear from the Zoom or meet or whatever it is and hear and think this uplifts our thinking sometimes they would say why do we have to attend daily a class <laughs> but that is the rule Sri Prabhupada made why he said daily because you daily you are picking up something you are nurturing your devotion and as you nurture your devotion the creeper of devotion service will rise and it will go and take its place right at the feet of Krishna. That is why daily hearing, very, very useful, absolutely useful. Don't miss your daily class. And if you can't attend a class, then hear a Bhagavatam maybe on the internet, on the YouTube. All the facilities are there. You can always type which verse you want to read. What was you want to hear? And so many books are there. We have so many facilities which were not there way back in the 70s. Now we have all those facilities. Still it is increasing. Still increasing. New, new devotees are producing new books and making these things more simpler so that you don't have to put so much of your effort. You can do it. But if you're an honest person, your duty is to read each verse. For example, the verse is here. Read the verse, word to word translation. 
the verse itself, the purport, and try to pick up each point Sri Prabhupada is making. And this is the way of learning Srimad Bhagavatam or any, or even Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Shetan Chatmint, all these books can be learned if you follow that system. There is a system given to us. Some devotees try to rush, it's not going to help. Go gradually and learn everything so that everything is remembered. Otherwise, you'll forget. If you go systematically, you'll not forget. If you try to rush, there are chances you can forget. Yes, there are people who can learn very quickly, and there are others who can't learn very quickly. So there's a room for everyone. <clears throat> everyone has a chance to uplift oneself to this level of becoming Krishna. So this is what, that is why here at least two devotees are mentioned, Maharaj Parikshit, Narad Muni. Both have a good background. Both had a chance of Maharaj Parikshit a chance to be born in a devoted family. Narad Muni, though born as a son of a maid servant, had the opportunity to hear from the devotees. So both are celebrated devotees, great devotees. And within that, we have Prabhupada and Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. And our Acharyas like Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, Jiva Goswami, each of these are great, great devotees of Lord Krishna, coming in the same parampara as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we, have, we are getting mercy of Mahaprabhu in so many ways. So we should take full advantage of it. Rupa Goswami, almost towards the end of the 19th chapter of the Nectar Devotion, he says, do not misuse your time. Utilize your time to learn so many things regarding Krishna consciousness. Sometimes you have a habit. Oh, let me do this, let me do that, which is not Krishna conscious. But if you become experienced, you realize that actually you had wasted your time. So don't waste your time. Hare Krishna. So today we learned about Maharaj Parikshit. How fortunate he was born to be born in a Pandava family. What devotees of Krishna, later on he was cursed. But here in this verse we heard how even in the young age, he used to imitate the worship of Lord Krishna as done by his parents. So if you are born in a family of devotees, you are a lucky person, a fortunate person. So we should take a full advantage of it. Generally, those who are born in devotee families, Sri Prabhupada himself says, they're no ordinary people. Maybe they come from a very high background of the last life. They come into your family <coughs> and how you train them, <coughs> take care of them, make them to consciousness. That will be advantage even to you as they grow older. Hare Krishna. Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Any questions, any additions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much. And I also mm. learned about keeping the time, constant mm. time. <clears throat> I think that is very important. It's a good take-home point, especially for me. Uh, I travel so much, so uh, I haven't been able to chant uh, uh, regularly. But uh, I like your... Um, uh, if you kept uh, your time like 6 o'clock, then wherever you are in the world, 6 o'clock is 6 o'clock. It doesn't change. You can. Yeah. I can share one experience that there are one <laughs> or two times I have traveled with the devotees in long flight also. And uh, they all have a common habit. They all chant throughout the flight. Throughout the flight. Flight may be 7 hours or 10 hours. They will chant Hare Krishna. And they won't do anything. They'll talk what is necessary throughout their chanting. And I have had that experience. Such a good experience you can get if you travel with devotees. So even as you said, because you are traveling, I would advise you, carry your bead bag with you on your neck. <clears throat> Don't be shy of carrying it. And chant. Because okay. After all, what can you do in this? Just sitting like this for so many hours. Chant mm -hmm. You may do it silently, it doesn't matter. But you chant Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Are there any questions or comments? I think Path Prima Prabhu has a question. Uh, Prabhu. 
Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your nice class. Prabhuji, uh, just the first paragraph, the last line, can you please take first paragraph, last line? The celebrated, last the the celebrated okay. Mirabai was a staunch devotee of Lord Krishna as the great lifter of Govardhan Hill. Yes, she is very much celebrated, you... especially in India. Uh, Famous duty of Krishna, Mirabai. Now she was born in a Kshatriya family. We can say Rajputs are Kshatriyas. And <clears throat> from young age, the inclination was given by her mother. When she asked her mother, who's going to be my husband? And the mother said, Krishna. So from that day onwards, she became a staunch follower of Krishna. That is what Sri Prabhupada is saying. And Mirabai is loved, practical by every Indian in India. Every Indian in India, they love Mirabai. And they know, of course, her bhava is Aishwari bhava. Aishwari, no, it's not Madhuri bhava. It's not like the gopis of the Radharani. No, it's Aishwari bhava. It's on, a, on another level. But it is accepted. Is that okay? That line, you understood? Yeah, Mirabai, is that the line, line you were asking? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Mirabai yeah. is a trans devotee and she is a great devotee, we know. But what is the connection between uh, Mirabai is a devotee of Lord Krishna as the great lifter of the Govardhan Hill? Yes, Krishna is the lifter of Govardhan Hill. She knew it. That is the meaning. Because if you hear Govardhan Leela, it means you know who is Krishna. If you understood Gordon Leela, then you know who is Krishna. That is what Sri Prabhupada mentions as the great lifter of Gordon Hell. Because in the Gordon Leela, it has many, many aspects. No, number one aspect, no need to worship anyone except Krishna. No need to worship any demigod, only Krishna. All, no need to take shelter of anyone except Krishna. And that Krishna, Gordon is a devotee of Krishna. Because he's been touched by Krishna, he's none different from Krishna. So many things we can learn. At the end of the Leela, the Shurbi comes, the cow comes, and tells Krishna that real Indra is you, not this Indra. Because Indra had, had tried to insult Krishna. So Shurbi says, you are the real Indra. So, so many things we can learn from just one Leela of Krishna, Gaurdhan Leela. That's why he's mentioning here, Mirabai. Because later on, she went to live in Vrindavan. There's a meeting with Jiva Goswami also. And then she moved to Dwarka. <coughs> as by advice of Jiva Goswami. Yes, sir. Thank okay? you, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, thank you so much for this nice class. You yeah. explained nicely. And... Uh, like we were talking about why we should listen to Bhagavatam every day. So yes. every day, every day, what do we do? We take a bath, we clean the body outside, and we feed the body, we eat for the body. But what do we do for the soul? The soul needs food also. So listening to Bhagavatam, chanting, doing prayers, these are the food for the soul. The soul needs it. That yes. is that is uh, one point. Also, uh, uh, about uh, we're talking about um, the great devotees. We see Prahlad Maharaj. He listened when he was in the womb of his mother from Narad Muni. Yes, and yes. how much he gathered. And just like um, we see Parikshit Maharaj also. So they, they listen. They, they get the association and they know about it. So the association even Dhruva. He got association for a few minutes with Narad Muni. So how much he changed after he met the Lord, got the yes. right association and the right instruction. And uh, it doesn't matter where we take birth. You know, so I, I watch one of the videos. I usually don't, don't watch. But there is this, this girl from Africa, Achitta Gopi. She's a yes. black girl. She says yes, yes. so nicely. It's like more than six, 600, 6,000 people watching his the, a song. How much mm -hmm. enthusiasm she's putting in and how beautiful it is. Now see yes. her, how she dressed, 
to cover her head with a chunni, how she dresses mm. in gopi dress. And if you take people in from India, they don't do it. Many people yes. don't do it. If you, mm. there is one one little thing to happen, is one mm. um, one Canadian boy, he met mm. this Indian girl, and mm. because he goes to temple, to run to temple, yeah. Mm. So he was so happy. He says he, he was telling, I met this Indian girl. First day, second day they met. Third day he says, mm. okay. He put his kurta on and he went to meet this girl. And you know what the girl said? You are too boring. Because he wore kurta. Yeah. You are too boring. <laughs> so uh -huh. she is Indian and he is Westerner. He's trying mm. to pull her into Krishna Kasha, but she says, no, you are too boring. And she left. And mm. we see where we are going from there. So he, he's trying to do something good and she doesn't understand it. And he, he says, okay, if I'm boring, I'm boring, fine. But he wants somebody who understands the Krishna consciousness, can go to temple with him. Yes, he's, yes. Not, he's not initiated anything. He just went to Govinda's restaurant there a couple of times, and then every day he wants to go to temple now. But yes. this, is, this is what is happening in our world. Association yes. also here, but, but some people are not fortunate to, to take the good side. And then yes. practice. My grandson, when he was, he could not even talk. He would, he would see the mother, put his hand in the bead bag, and just, he doesn't know what he's saying, but he's shaking yes. his hand in the bead bag and he's just <laughs> uttering this word. Now the granddaughter, when, uh, since she's four, four years old, she's dressing yes. the deity. So I've got those soft toys of Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra. And when yes. I make dresses, I send for her deity. She would take that dresses, those dresses and put on the deities, put the hat, put everything. And my daughter was showing me on, on camera. I said, oh, you, 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 you dress them nicely. These dress I stand for for your uh, 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 deities. So yet it's, it's Nandini who took them and, and put on on uh, Bernard Baldev was And I said, wow, she, she's at this age. Did you help? No, I didn't help. She did it on her own. So they are watching what their parents are doing, what their mother is doing every day. You don't need yes. to go go bow down, go do this, go do that. Whenever they mm. want, they will do, take the bell and they will ring and they will chant and they will do the um, Damodar has to come, they do it from very young age. Also at school, they are taught all these things. So association and then whatever practice we do, that's what we leave behind for our children. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much for the nice class. Thank Hare you. Krishna. As I said earlier, that when you are practicing, you are also being observed, especially by others, and especially people of your own family, especially your own children are watching you. So be careful. Whatever you're doing, do it properly. Don't fool around. Krishna consciousness is on an absolute platform. And it's going to benefit everyone. So let them benefit. You do properly, you're going to give this benefit to them. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, any more questions or comments? If there are no questions or comments, I can I hand over to Pat Prabhu. Prabhu, is it possible for you to end the session for today? Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your nice and fine class. Also, thanks all the devotees who are joining here in this platform. So, I request everyone, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna mantra for glorification of His Grace, Bhukma Prabhuji. Please join. Hare Krishna, Krishna, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.